Hello everybody, welcome back to another installment of Life Stories. My name is Trent, I've been away for a week. I've been sick, but we're back, we're healthy, and hopefully we're gonna get some more content coming to you rapid fire style. So, let's get started. Our first story of the day is titled, A Refrigerator You Say. This happened a few years ago, and is more of a short and funny, I'm pretty sure you've got the wrong phone number story. I work tech support, mostly by phone, for a small internet phone and television provider company. I get a lot of entitled customers, and a lot of really lost ones, in their mind and on technology. This happened early in the morning during summer, when the office had almost no calls, so I was the only one on the phone. This was an open plan office, with headsets. The conversation happened in French, so I'll do my best to translate. The cast is me, a 25-year-old female at the time, who sounds younger, an old lady, I think, and my two co-workers, they were more experienced. The phone rang. Hi, technical support. Hi. Hi? I recently bought a fridge. Okay. So... Well, it doesn't work anymore. Your fridge doesn't work anymore. No. My co-workers start laughing. Me, trying really hard not to laugh. I'm sorry, madam, but I can't help you with that. But your technical support? Yes, but for X company. We don't have anything to do with refrigerators. But where should I call then? Probably the store where you bought it? There might be a warranty. You think so? Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you. She hung up like that, and I complained to my co-workers that they really didn't make it easier by laughing. Definitely a short one, and I've got to say, this has been the first time I've ever seen someone see the term tech support as catch-all for literally every single appliance you could possibly own. That's a new one. Our second story of the day is titled, Enjoy Your Tea Time. Years ago, we had a phone number which was two digits reversed from a very popular golf club. If you didn't book tea times weeks in advance, there was no chance of getting a time. Of course, because people are dumb, we'd often get called by folks trying to reach the club. Most times, this wasn't a problem. Our cast is me, duh, and SG, stupid golfer. The phone rings. Hello? Uh, I'd like to book a tea time for blah blah blah. This isn't the gol- SG interrupting and yelling. Yes it is! Don't play this game with me! Now book my tea time for blah blah blah. Now, I'm polite to a point, and since I was interrupted and being yelled at, I hung up. Ten seconds later, the phone rings. I can see by the caller ID that it's the same number. Hello, this still isn't the golf course. How dare you hang up on me? Do you know who I am? Now book my f- I hang up again. Phone rings again, right away. Same caller ID. Time to be a jerk. Hello? What is your name? I demand to book my tea time. Sorry, sir. My last name is Oxlong. First name, Mike. I'll have you booked for your requested time. When I show up, I'll be complaining to your supervisor about this unacceptable behavior. Okay, sir. I can only imagine the shenanigans that went down when he showed up and not only had no tea time, but complained about Mike Oxlong. This occurred so often that if someone claimed to know better than we did, that we were in fact a golf course, even after being told that they had the wrong number, We'd just say sure, accept their booking, and be done with it. Ah, <sighs> man. Really is a cruel world we live in. Two rearranged numbers is all it takes when nobody knows how to read. Moving on to our third story, it's titled, I certainly don't work for you. This might not be the perfect fit for this sub, but I was about 16 at the time. It was summer, and one of my favorite things to do was go to the local park, sit at the end of one of the benches looking over the fish pond, and read. I was a true bookworm, and once deep into a tale of mystery or adventure, would completely tune out the real world. On the day of this story, I believe I was somewhere in the vicinity of Narnia, or Middle Earth, when a loud, YOU, repeated once or twice, broke through my concentration. I looked up to see an angry old man. Okay, I was 16, he could have been anything from 40 to 100, for all I could tell. Standing over me and pointing at the ground past the far end of the park bench. Pick that up! 
I had no clue or context as to what he was talking about, or why he was angry with me. I should probably have been frightened, but there were a lot of people around, and I felt safe in this park. I'm sure I was gaping at him, and looking a bit dim-witted. Put that in the garbage can! I finally understood what he was shouting about, but still didn't know why he was shouting at me. On the ground, past the garbage can, which was on the opposite end of an 8-foot bench on which I was sitting, was a crumpled fast food soda cup. It was not mine. I hadn't noticed it before, and for all I knew, it could have been laying there for days. Being a good little girl who was brought up to answer to adults, however irrational, I stammered, That's not mine. You kids are all so lazy. You need to get over there and throw that in the garbage. He was getting really loud and red in the face, and was advancing on me while making violent pointing gestures towards me, and then the garbage can. I'd like to claim that I rebelled and sassed the old guy, putting him in his place, but in reality, I leaped up, clutching my book, and scurried off and away. I wasn't frightened of him being some sort of pedophile, as a teenager today might be, but just of a random stranger feeling like it was acceptable to approach and berate some young person minding their own business. Truly, had he approached me quietly and said something along the lines of, Could you maybe put that cup in the garbage can? I hate litter, but I can't bend down and pick things up easily anymore. I'd have jumped up to help. I don't know if you guys have caught on, but it feels like all these stories point to public parks being completely cursed by old people. And our next story is titled, Karen recognizes me from a job I stopped working at over a year prior. One day after work, I stopped by the local pet superstore where all the pets go in order to get some litter for my two cats. This particular location has a station where you can refill your own jugs with the store brand litter at a discount if you buy one of their containers first. I have Maine Coon mixes, so I buy in bulk when I can and had three empty jugs in my cart and a fourth in my hand that I was refilling with litter. It's at this point that I hear a woman clear her throat. It was cold season, so a lot of people were doing that and became vaguely aware of an older woman getting closer to me. I just moved closer to the bin so she could pass behind me if she needed to, finish up with the first jug, and move on to the second. This was apparently the wrong thing to do, as the woman huffs at me. Where are the poop scoops? I stop what I'm doing and glance around, thinking that maybe she'd spoken to an employee that was stocking shelves or something. But no, she's scowling right at me. It was early in the afternoon in the middle of the week, so there weren't many employees in the store yet. Whatever, no big deal. I have a vague idea of where things are since they remodeled the store. I take a second to glance down at the aisle I'm standing next to and relief to see the litter boxes. I reflexively give her a customer service smile and gesture down the aisle. Oh, they're at the end of this aisle, against the wall. Karen doesn't bother to thank me as she moves closer to the aisle, looking down it before huffing again. These ones are too small. I need a big one. I realize at this point she means the dog shovel scoop things. I shrug and move on to my third litter container. Well, I only have cats, so I don't know where the dog stuff is now that they remodeled the store. You should probably ask an employee. But you're an employee! I see you here all the time! I should probably point out that I work in an office and was dressed in black trousers, heels, and a green pattern blouse with a small purse hanging off the shoulder facing Karen. The employees here wear sneakers, jeans, and either a red or blue t-shirt with the company name and logo in big white letters on the front and back of the t-shirt. I have two large cats, so they go through litter pretty fast, so I'm here on an almost weekly basis, but I don't work here. That's a lie. You gave my dog a bath, and I've seen you on the registers. It's at this point that I'm a little shocked. I had worked in the grooming salon of this particular store for a couple of months, but that was well over a year ago. I'm sorry, I should clarify. I haven't worked for this company in over a year. They've remodeled the store since I was an employee, so I don't really know where they moved the dog shovels to. I believe they were at the front of the store when I worked here, but that area is now where they have the dog food. I finally see an employee approaching, probably drawn to Karen's steadily rising voice, and point him out to Karen, who promptly stomps over to him to complain. I'd finished refilling my jugs, so I pushed my cart towards the register, only catching part of Karen's complaints about my poor customer service before I tuned the rest out. Funny thing is, I would have just helped her find where it had been moved to if she hadn't started talking to me like I was beneath her. 
Just because you're old doesn't give you the right to toss basic manners to the dogs. <laughs> Get it? Dogs? <laughs> and that's about all the time we have today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in to Life Stories. My name is Trent. Feels good to be back. As usual, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content coming your way. And I hope to see you guys soon.